So we're going to talk about the gear now. Uh, in today's lecture, we'll see the introduction to the gear. I'll look at a few things. Okay, uh, we'll use the handout that I give it to you there to go over uh, some terminologies uh, regarding gear. Okay. Okay. First of all, uh, what do we what we're going to learn in this uh, part of the lecture is we're going to learn a few things. Uh, actually, many two type of gear: spur gear and helical gear. Okay, and we'll introduce you bevel gear and, and the worm gear. And we'll look at uh, how do we calculate the velocity ratios for different uh, gear trains. Okay. And we'll also look at uh, how to uh, uh, calculate the gear forces or action reactions on the gear, uh, from the gear on the shaft. Okay. Yeah. And uh, that will lead us to basically the shaft design and the bearing selection. Okay. And last of all, we're going to look at is how do we design uh, to, to uh, satisfy uh, the uh, the design for the gear to satisfy certain uh, criteria. So one thing that we're going to use is is called AGMA uh, equation, okay, for the gear design, right? Yeah. So officially, basically, we're going into the tree at here in terms of uh, design for different machine elements, okay, and uh, we're going to deal with this portion. So we'll uh, look at the rotational to rotational, uh, which involves gear, bearing, and shaft, keys, so uh, this, 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 all right? So we'll finish that, uh, try to finish that uh, in two or three weeks. Okay. So let's look for, uh, uh, first of all, there's a very important fi uh, figure, it's, uh, and it's called George uh, Grant, okay? Uh, it, it, this machine on the Right side is called George Difference, um, a, a difference machine here. Basically, in 1876, there was a centennial exhibit in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Uh, the, there's on the display there's a called Grant's Difference Engine. It's a five feet by eight feet size and it weighs about a ton. Okay. Now the machine actually does mechanically uh, do some uh, uh, accurate arithmetic calculations. So like a two plus two or three times six, something like that. Okay. Now, this guy, George Grant, didn't really become the father of a computer, but he becomes the father of American gear industry. So he created three different uh, 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 gear companies, and one of them is called Boston Gear, so which is the very famous one, right? Yeah. So actually, if you Google this one here, a lot of uh, universities, uh, there's some student project, uh, they're actually trying to recreate this machine using gears to do some calculations. Fun. So, what type of gear will we see now? Uh, first, a spur gear. A spur gear is the simplest form of a gear, and their teeth are parallel okay, to the axis of rotation. So, this is the actual rotation. Okay? Yeah. And it's mainly used to transmit power from one shaft to another parallel shaft. So, essentially, uh, if there's another gear, another shaft, then the power can be transmitted from this shaft to this shaft, right? Depends on which one is driving which one. Okay. Uh, the uh, spur gear will generate the so-called radial load on the shaft. So as as we're gonna later, we're gonna learn when when we when we have a gear it depends on the pressure angle, we will have action reaction force, okay, uh, from one pinion to another gear, and the shaft. This is the shaft location for two gear that carries uh, this. Uh, that carries this sh this uh, gear will feel the two action reaction force. So basically, if you have a shaft, then there will be a force basically resulted on the shaft, and that's what we call the radial. So it's along the this force is along the radial direction of this circle. Okay, that's what we call radial load on the shaft. Okay, yeah. So spur gear generates only radial loads, load. Okay, as we're gonna see the next uh, helical gear, and uh, you'll have a well, later we'll talk about in more detail. You'll have a thrust load. Okay. As you can see, uh, the, this is a helical gear, but I see uh, this is a basically a gear train transmission, uh, manual transmission. Mostly they're using spur gear and uh, helical gear. 
Okay, so helical gear. Uh, helical gear is used for transmitting power between two parallel shafts, just like the same as uh, the uh, a spur gear. Okay. However, okay, the difference is, okay, the gear teeth is not straight anymore. Okay, it's inclined to the surface. So that's the helical gear. Uh, basically, is why is it called helical? Is if you uh, uh, if you basically extend the cylinder. Okay, this is the body of the the gear a bit of a more, and that gear, the gear tooth, essentially is a helix. Okay, if you go around here, that's a part of the helix basically. All right, yeah, that's actually how you if you use a cast software trying to uh, model a helical gear, that's how you actually uh, should do. You create a helix uh, with a certain parameters like a, a helix angle, and then you just pick only one portion of that. Okay, and that's basically a portion of your helical teeth. Okay, yeah. Now, because this is inclined now, then uh, there is a advantage compared to the spur gear. So the contact area, right, is bigger now. It's uh, on the, and also the contact is a gradual contact. So it's be also becoming smoother compared to the spur gear. Okay, the helical gear. However, because the inclined the teeth the surface inclined, so if there is another gear acting on it, so the force mm -hmm. is going to be perpendicular basically to that surface. So the force, not like this one here, you know, the force here is perpendicular to the shaft, right? Yeah. So now you have a force basically creating. If this is the shaft, then the force is more like this. So then you have two components of the force. One component is in the radial direction, the other component is along the shaft, right? So that component of the force along the shaft is what we call the thrust force. Okay? Yeah. So the uh, the effect is, and in the later, uh, because the thrust force, you always have to tran you know you have you have to transmit the force you know from the shaft to the ground. So how do we do that? And then you have to use a basically a, a thrust bearing, right? Basically, to take the thrust force and then to the ground. Okay, yeah. So that's basically the the difference for uh, helical gear. Okay, and uh, there is a uh, one remedy is uh, they use this uh, double basically they call the herringbone kind of a uh, structure. I don't have the picture here. So uh, the the spur gear, you know, basically uh, there is like a tire herringbone, so the fish basically bones, right? Two directions, so the thrust force cancel each other in the two directions. Right? Yeah. Uh, there, uh, when we differentiate the helical gear, we have this so-called right helix or right, uh, left helix. So how do we uh, tell that? Then you basically what you do very simple. You put that on the flat on the horizontal surface, okay? And if you see the uh, helix, basically the, the teeth is inclined to the right, and then it's a right flat. To the left, right to the left. Or you can also think in terms of right hand rule. So it's, it's helix, right? So we use right hand rule here, right? That's basically right handed, right? Okay, that's the right helix. Okay. Straight bevel gear. So straight meaning the teeth are straight. Uh, bevel gear now is basically uh, the two axes, okay? The two axes rotation. They actually intersect. Okay, at one point, okay, could be 90 degree or it could be some other degrees, right? Yeah. The peach surface is different from the spur gear. If when you have a spur gear, you know the peach surface, this is basically a cylinder, right, for the spur gear. But now for the bevel gear, the peach surface, this is the peach surface, is part of the cone. Okay, it's a cone here. So essentially. Uh, it's part of the cone. You cut it off. You take part of the cone, and then you machine the uh, the, the the teeth on the surface. Okay, that give you the bevel gear. Okay. And they are suitable for one to one or higher velocity ratio. Uh, it's very commonly used in the automobile differential drive. Okay. However, this is the simplest idea for the differential drive. I'm going to show you later. Now, uh, for actual differential drive, is uh, probably not going to be that simple. Just a straight bevel gear. So for actual ones. It's an extension of the actually the spiral barrel gear. Okay, 
So the T's, instead of it's a straight, it's, it's a spiral. It's a spiral, essentially, it's like a helical kind of a, uh, gear teeth. All right? Yeah. So again, the, the, the advantage of this one compared to the straight one is then you have a gradually, you know, uh, uh, engagement, and there is less vibration and noise compared to the straight cut. Right? Yeah. And uh, it can also carry more uh, capacity co compared to that uh, uh, straight ones there. However, you know, this one here, uh, the arrangement is still, the two rotation the axis, they still intersect each other, okay? Yeah, still intersect. And, uh, and that actually gives you a, a disadvantage when the, in the early stage of a car design. I'll show you a video uh, just shortly here. So this is, is basically an ex and the modification of the spiral bevel gear. It's called hypoidal bevel gear. And the major difference is, see the axis of the driven one, is not intersecting, right? It's not intersecting of this uh, uh, driven one, right? The driving one is not intersecting this one, okay? That does give you a good uh, advantage uh, because uh, I'll show you a video, and uh, this is uh, probably the best kind of video you can find on YouTube in terms of differential gear, okay? It's very old. Um, it's probably in the 1940s, 1950, or even earlier, you know. There, so you can see that how old it is. So I'll skip uh, some of this uh, from the beginning. There is some of the very silly stuff, yeah. <laughs> but it does you know introduce you idea of the differential gears stuff like that. Okay, but I really want to show you is the last portion. Uh, what is the difference made regarding that, uh, you know, uh, non-intersecting axis of rotation? So this is basically uh, sort of a street bevel gear, right, that kind of structure. So let's start from here, maybe. What really happened, right? That was what really happened. So anyway, um, this is what I always see the, the advantage of being a mechanical engineer, you know, for another hundred years. So I don't think this thing changes. You know, <laughs> what you still do is the same thing as uh, more or less, right? Uh, not like uh, electrical computer science. You know, there's constant evolutions of technology, right? Yeah. So worm gear, okay, is another type of gear. Uh, they are mostly used for right angle tr drives. So because this axis is this and that axis is that, so that's 90 degree, right? So 90 degree right angle uh, drive here. Uh, worm gear usually are used for very large de gear deduction. The reason is because this is a worm. As you actually see is, there's only one teeth. Because if you draw this out, this is basically a helix, right? So the teeth goes around the shaft, right? For s for that many of lengths, okay, yeah. So there's only one teeth. So the gear ratio is always basically the number of teeth over here over one, right? So that gives you a pretty high gear ratio. 
unless you have a double helix, you know, sometimes we will learn the thread, we can have a double helix. Uh, you can also have a double helix here. So that basically become this number t is divided by 2, right? Yeah. However, the uh, disadvantage is uh, the worm gear will generate this basically uh, this so-called sliding motion. So the surface will slide on this surface there. Because the sliding motion, as you know, is basically it will create this friction. Okay. So the friction has to be taken into consideration uh, when you are designing for a worm gear. All right, so that's worm gear. Okay. I have some more information in the lecture notes. You can uh, uh, you can read that. Okay. <coughs> so gear terminology. Okay. So we, this is where we're going to use that handout uh, to uh, uh, go to go together. Uh, first of all, there's a quick one here. Okay. When you draw two gears, you don't need to draw all the teeth. All you actually need to do is just draw two circles. Okay. Tangent to each other. But these two circles are two special circles, which is called peach circle. Okay, peach circle, and that's generally that's the uh, yeah, that's the all the calculations are based on the peach circles. All right, so those are very important circle for the peach circle. The center to center distance, okay, is calculated by uh, two diameters adding together divided by two. Okay. Uh, DP, DG represents the pitch diameter for the pinion and for the gear. And NP, NG are the uh, number of T's on the pinion and on the gear. All right? Yeah. Okay, so now let's go over okay, some of the terminologies all together okay, using this diagram here. Okay? Yeah. So some of the names already put it there, but uh, let's fill out the blank here. So first of all, uh, this length. So from here to here, this is called face width. Okay, we use capital F to represent the face width. So there's some confusion sometimes is uh, because we generally use F for force, but here we're using this F for face width. All right. And the intermediate circle, this one here, is the so-called peach circle. Okay, this is the peach circle here. Okay, this is a peach circle. Then there's another circle right on the top here, and this is called addendum circle. And there's one circle at the bottom here. Okay. This is called dedendum circle, the most bottom one here. So this arrow here, okay? okay. Dendum circle. So in the next graph we'll have another one which is called the base circle. Okay, in this in this one here we didn't draw that one. Uh, however, uh, in this one here there's a one circle here, the one right above the denim circle, okay, we call that clearance circle. Okay, clearance circle. So what is a clearing circle is you have to think in terms of a pair of gear. So there is another gear on the top, right? So that gear uh, goes in here. Okay, so the top portion of this gear, this, this circle for that gear tooth is actually in analogy is this portion here, right? This portion. And that's the dedent, that's the addendum circle, right? Addendum circle. So the ten the circle, basically the circle tangent to the addendum circle of the mating gear is the clearance circle. So you need a clearance basically between the dedendum and uh, and the, the uh, addendum circle of the mating gear, okay? Yeah, you can't let it touch the uh, the bottom of land, basically. Okay, yeah, that's clearance. 
Okay, so let's keep moving on here. And there is a width arc length. So the arc length is from here to here. So basically, the arc length along the pitch circle uh, between two adjacent gear teeth. Okay, so from here to here between two adjacent gear teeth, and that arc length is called circular pitch. So here. And we use a small letter P, okay, small letter P to, re to represent the circular pitch. So my writing for the small letter and the capital letter, we have a capital letter P. Uh, sometimes it could be confusing, but uh, you should to remember, huh? small P for circular pitch. This uh, circular pitch can be evenly divided into two arc lengths. One arc length is from here to here, so along the pitch circle. And that is called the tooth thickness. So fit here, this is the tooth thickness. So apparently, the tooth thickness is half of this circular pitch, P, small letter P, okay? And the other one here is uh, this, uh, from here to here, the open area, and that's called the width of space. Okay, and that's another half of uh, circular pitch, P, okay? Yeah. Yeah, they are always equal, yeah. So, uh, you can think of this basically uh, within this space it's where the mating gear comes into the picture right so the mating gears two thickness should be the same as the pinions two thickness okay yeah <coughs> all right now the distance between the addendum circle and the peach circle this portion is called addendum And we use small letter A for this addendum, right? Yeah. So, uh, for uh, full for full twos, there's also stub twos. For full twos, uh, that A, okay, uh, and uh, the small letter. Uh, I guess uh, I'll write it down here. The A and then capital P here. There's a relationship between cap what is capital P? Capital P is called diametral pitch. Okay, capital P is called diametral pitch. Okay. So, what is diametral pitch? Diametral pitch is basically defined as the number of teeth over the pitch diameter. Okay, so some of you uh, probably uh, uh, learned this in the 380. Yeah, sorry, uh, uh, sorry, 381, right? Yeah. How many of you take that course actually? Yeah. Good. So the addendum, that dis that distance a is related to the diametral pitch one over p. Okay. Yeah, one over p. The distance between the pitch circle and the dedendum circle, this is basically what we call the dedendum, small letter b. Okay. And the small letter b is also related to the capital P. Okay. And that relationship is 1.25 over capital P. Okay. Yeah. That's dedendum. Now, in the next week uh, tutorial, or in your project design, and in what part of the exercise, you'll be uh, you'll be required to create a gear, basically uh, using SolidWorks, and I have a video on that. And those parameters are very important ones in order to create the gear properly. Right? Yeah. Okay. So the A plus B, right, which is the distance from the, uh, sorry. A plus B, which is the distance from the addendum circle to the denim circle, and this is called the uh, the holes uh, the hole the uh, the hole depths. Okay, the hole depths. So we can use H, which is A plus B. 
okay, a plus b. And the distance between the addendum and the clearance circle, so basically this portion here, is called the working depth. Okay, it's called working depth. So the working depth, as you can see, is, is actually equal to what? It's equal to a plus b, the whole depth, minus which portion? Minus this little portion here, right? Yeah. And this little portion here, let's call it a c. Let's call it just clearance. Okay, small letter c. So small letter c clearance, okay, is also related to the uh, to this uh, uh, to the capital P. If I use the geometry here, what does a small letter c equal to? Is actually equal to what? Equal to this uh, d denim circle minus the addendum here. Okay, so the c equal to b minus a, so which is 0.25 over capital P. Okay, so which means the working depth here is equal to a plus b minus c. Okay. So that's pretty much all the symbols involved in this diagram here. Was that right? Yeah. Okay. Now, between the circular pitch and the diametral pitch, there is a relationship. Okay. There is a relationship between the circular pitch and diametral pitch. So circular pitch, okay, small letter p, okay, small letter p, is equal to the circumference over number of t's. Okay, over number of t's. So what does that mean? Circumference basically means it's a two pi r or pi times the pitch diameter, right? And number of t's is n, okay? Number of t's is n here. So if I compare the circular pitch with a diametral pitch, so what is the relationship now? So apparently, the small letter p equal to the pi over capital P, right? equal to pi over capital P, if I compare these two. Okay? So what we what we are doing now is all inch series. Okay? Now you do have a standard unit, but when it comes to standard unit, the difference is instead of calling it diametral pitch, we call that module. Okay? So module here. So for SI unit, it's module. And module is basically the inverse of the capital P, okay? Inverse capital P. So those are some very important uh, parameters uh, you, will, uh, you will use to create a gear. Now for the face width, some of the fact here, for face width, the capital F, okay? Uh, there is a general emp em empirical formula for the face width is this. So you pick your face width, okay? Uh, to be within this range. So 8 over capital P and 16 over capital P because this is not small p, capital P. Okay, so diametral pitch. So that's a generic, general critical uh, formula. And the other, uh, the other one you also should uh, bear in mind is generally the face width is less than twice the pitch diameter of the pinning. Okay, so if, if your pinning is really big, right, you don't want to be as big as twice of the pinion diameter, okay? Yeah. And the cost is, uh, should also be taken into consideration of the face width. All right, any questions? So we're kind of running out. We'll, we'll uh, fill out the blanks for this one next lecture, okay? Yeah.